We are finally back here at the M3 garage. As you see, things look much different in here than they did on the last video. We've since got the Jazzborn machine out. She's golden. And we've got the big truck in. So we're gonna start working on this, but we've got one last, or one last project to get to, which is digging into the DPS to find out what exactly went wrong. So in the meantime, Len hung an awesome little furnace here for us to uh, use and stay warm, which is sweet. Really? That way we don't have to listen to uh, the one that I ran over with the uh, skid steer. Oh yeah, we don't have to turn the heat off when we're filming them for. Yeah, she's whisper quiet. She's running right now and couldn't be happier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Running the gas line 100 feet, all that stuff. Yep, did it all legit. Buried, all legit, got it in all inside. All, all inspected and ready yep. to go. Permitted and all that jazz. It's on the back side, that's why you guys can't see it. Yeah. So, <laughs> back to the DPS. So, what if you guys remember kind of uh, what was going on here is we found or felt like a, like a pulsing sensation with it, which it was either like the magnets in the motor being engaged or possibly like a bearing that got smashed and you know was jumping over itself. So there's no other videos out there like this that really dives into the DPS for Can-Am, so we're just gonna start ripping into it. And yeah, the other one you couldn't turn it with your, you could turn, the new one you could turn with your hand, yep. right here. This one, nothing. So, you can't even... leads me into two different directions. There's a torsion bar that's in between these two with some Hall effect sensors, and if how it senses is when you put input, if there's any difference between the locations of the sensors, it'll input, uh, power to help you steer so we're thinking maybe in the accident with jason's big old gorilla grips he might have held this as the front tires try to turn and maybe the torsion bar is out of adjustment and it's not allowing the clutch to come out so it's anybody's guess but we're about to I'm find gonna out guess broken gear yeah I, or something or something's mashed together and it's not it's not broken it's not meshed right something's not, yeah. that's yeah. my guess you guys guess see what you think put it in the comments put it below Put so. something in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> subscribe button. On yes, yeah, please hit, hit that. that too. We're, we've been doing great lately, guys. We appreciate everybody who's new to us and uh, who's been following us. It means a lot. Uh, so yeah, what's it take to hit that subscribe button? Just hit it. Just a little button. You don't have to watch everyone. Just hit that subscribe. <laughs> button. It shows us you appreciate it. So. That's right. It lets us to keep doing more stuff like yes. this. So uh, all right. Got this old ratchet gun here. We're just gonna tear right into it. I think what's that? A T forty. T forty. It's actually a forty. Yeah. He's a big one. Yeah, well, we'll take this off first. And... Yeah, well, we gonna show it the most. Have, yeah, we're gonna have to get the big. Yeah, we're okay. gonna have to get the big dog. You know those? Uh, I've been wanting to buy one. Uh, you ever seen those tools they use for like motorcycles? It's like a flathead or a Phillips, and you put it down in the hole and you smack it. And it just turns it just enough, but yeah. gives it. We used to use that on the old cars when they had. They had the Phillips screws for the doors and stuff. Oh, okay. That's the only way you could get them off. But that's what I was thinking. I'd... I've got one here somewhere. It's old. It's, oh, nice. We'll have to it's try that. It's old school. It's going the right way. Loctite, I'm sure. Yep, yellow yeah, Loctite. As always. Can-Am's famous yellow. It was the same when we did the uh, loop job on the... So this is made by Konisberg, which makes a lot of stuff in uh, Slovenia. Is this going to come off? No, nah, oh, we're going to have to get a screwdriver. Looks like we've got a little, couple little spots here where we can wedge with a flathead. We'll use this pry bar. There you go. Because it's convenient, not because that's what I do all the time. <laughs> I hate using okay. woodworking tools for... just annoys me! Oh, what do we got oh, going on yeah, here? All kinds what is this? of goodies. What's all this garbage in here? That's going to be... Oh, it's plugged in there. Okay, oh, that's going to be a center. So that's where the torsion bar is. We're going to have to dig deeper into that, I bet you. Well, the next step here is to see if we can turn this. Now, look at... Do we see any damage down in there? Well, there's a screw gear there. Yep. But, but the thing is, though, is if this is locked directly to this, then you could get into a position with no power and you know like you can't this gear can't turn this gear but this gear can turn that gear so there's got to be a clutch system built in here we need to get a pair of uh uh pliers to see if we can turn this and see if we still feel that uh 
Are we touching down here on the bottom? Alright, so I was incorrect with that. So this is probably one of the first times I've ever seen this, guys. Instead of having a clutch built into this area, it actually, you're physically able to turn the, the worm gear. And that's kind of kind of strange. So the next question is, is if we remove the motor from this side, can we get rid of the pulsing or is the pulsing torn into this gear here? Yeah, the pulsing is... Still feels up I farther see, in? Yeah, it's in the motor. You can feel that it's in the motor. Okay. Like the motor shot. Well, let's pull, let's pull these end ones here. It's gonna be... These little guys. Twenty or twenty-five. There you go. Need your little extension, or you got it. I'm not gonna have a quarter inch, quarter inch job. So that's very interesting. Yeah, it is. It's neat to see that. You can see that very often. No. Brought to you by M3 Garage. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I'm very curious. This has been driving me nuts of where that pulse, where it, what failed. That's going to take you to the next level, I think. More canium. Here, let's tap oh, off. Oh, that's weird. One yeah, because this is a different other, housing. Right, yeah. Let's uh, do a little tappy. Not, not with your claw hammer, though. She looks like she's sealed. It is, I think. We might need to get a flat head. Oh, right here. We... Oh, no, I don't use that. You're supposed to use a wood chisel for that. <laughs> you, you get a little... Yeah, you use a wood well, chisel and a claw hammer. And These a hammer, are your tools. The hammer that he swore not to use in one of our previous videos. Oh, here we go. We got some separation now. She must I be, just hate uh... it when people use these tools, and here I am using them. I don't feel like walking across the shop. She's got something pulling her back in, or? Enjoy it. Nah, she's just sealed up real good. Oh, okay. Might be able to use that motor for something. <laughs> oh yeah, see something's going on here. You're not moving that shaft, so that's gotta be some kind of secondary cover. Yeah, this with is With some magnets a... or something that's... Huh. What do you got going on there? You Maybe we know. have to pull this plate yeah, maybe. And take the rest of it. She looks like she just wants to come apart now. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh. Well, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. What the freaking? Huh? See now this gear is smooth. Yeah, but and, you turn you, the motor. You can't and... feel it in the motor. That's weird. And there's a slight pull in there. What? Uh, see? Dude, man, what happened? So let's put this back on and see if... And just leave it loose. Because guys, the new one didn't, the new one didn't have any resistance or any kind of... No, that's what I'm wondering if something did get bent in this. There it goes. Came through now. To turn this up and get this engaged. Now you're able to turn it? Not my fingers. You still it's feel doing the... it. It's doing it. What the hell? It's got a little ratcheting to it. Well, you got to remember when we're turning this up here, th this is magnifying how fast it's turning that. And I did feel a pulse in there. Something's not. But the new one didn't do that. No. So something's not. What's beyond this? Oh, look at that. A little rubber. Jeez. That's all that's in between that two gears? Yeah, that's the coupler. This little coupler, with, it's rubber. Almost like belt material. Wow. Okay. Isn't, what the heck? So you're relying on power steering from a squishy little, like, heavy duty hose. <laughs> rubber, <laughs> that's your connection. I mean, your what? steering wheel to, to your your wheels is still solid guys but the power coupler the is power just is, like a rubber band the assist <laughs> is 
<laughs> it's, literally, it's stiffer than it's uh, a rubber cog gear. Radiator hose, but really? So what do we got down in here? Just got nothing special. Look in there. This is all the electronic. Oh, that turns smooth as silk. Yeah, and so does this. Oh, it's no. Yeah, you it's, feel you feel the pulse. Now, now remember, look, look how bit, see, yeah. see how when I turn how little. Look how fast that's turning that. So if you went to turn that that yeah. fast, it, you might start to feel that pulse. So but yeah, why it's, is it's in the motor? It's the only thing it. I can think is the whatever shorted this out. You know, like when you uh, take your positive to your negative and jumper a motor, you'll feel it pull or you'll feel it because yeah. it's trying to override. There's got to be some sort of capacitor in here that's not allowing the poles of the motor to disconnect. Yeah, that's the other curious thing. That's got to be the magnet housing that surrounds. Here, let's, uh, we're going to move some stuff around in the vise. We'll get right back to you guys. Quite a few sensors that were going yeah, up into the inside of that. Three capacitors. I don't know if we want to touch them the together. Coil. Yeah, they might still have a charge might, to them. Might blow up in my face. Okay. This is just taking the circuit board off, yep. maybe. Interesting, interesting. These are real small Torx. T10, I think. See, they got this anti-vibration goo on everything, which is going to make it harder to. Oh, there's no, there's more under there. This is like layers of. Yeah, and it's all kind of. I don't know how far we want to. How far we want to? Let me get a proper tool. We're going to try to get this shaft out of here and break this down as much as possible. But of course, this was non-serviceable. No, um, they, they don't want you. They don't want you messing here, with it. Here, do that again, and I'll put the. They do not want you messing with it. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's not a. It's not a regular E clip or a snap ring. It's. Oh. You had it really awesome that one time. <sighs> it was in the wrong spot. There we go. I got it. Yeah, this is, this thing's gonna be junk time we get done with it. Well, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. We that ring's toast. Yeah, well yeah. So what that mm. goes This should come What goes which way now? Well the gear should come off now. No, okay, then that stays solid in oh, there. I think so. Trusty claw yeah, that must still be captured in there, whereas the gear might be able to come out. Yeah, it did. It started. To, no, no, it didn't. No, it's not moving. Huh? The, I don't know how you. Those little knurled edges make me look like it's somewhat pressed. Yep. It is pressed on it's there. Pressed and yep. pinned. That's just an extra safety mm. precaution. Interesting. Well, that's that. Well, it's not. So I dug into this part. It's not in this. It's not in this section. No, not for the sure. It's not in this section. And the electrical. This is basically like Hall effect or torsion sensor, whatever you want to call it. You can see there's. Sure. Tons of little coils in here around each side that sense uh, which way this is turning and this piece sat down in here So that was what was given signal to the motor as which way to send you power see, You can see why it's a thousand bucks. Oh, yeah, for sure. Then it came over to this part which um, uh, This is pressed on so we without tearing up all this circuitry which we might we might continue to cut it open but we gotta to make this very unserviceable. They welded, they pinch welded all these electronic parts together. Yeah, these are two separate, two separate circuit boards here, one on the lower, and then they have two tabs that come up together, yeah. and then they they're either soldered or welded together. I think they look like they're soldered to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we might be able to heat them up and just 
pull them apart. Let's do it. Let's you just snip them with some wire clips, eh? Yeah, let's Hmm. Still don't understand why it was giving us the feedback, but it's got to be something that. It's got to be in the motor. Yeah. Got to be in the motor. Oh yeah. See they. Those are. Be curious if we clip these leads, if we get rid of that uh, jumping. You know what I'm saying? Like if one of these is still faulted out. Yeah, see, there we go. Yeah, cut them and then. Cut these sons of. Biscuits. Biscuits. Alright, so now, with them disconnected. Something still. Yeah, feel that. Spins a lot freer now that you cut those. Must have been getting back feed into something Capacitors. that's not open or something's charging or something's trying to do Capacitors. something. They gotta yeah. be charging that. Yeah, there it is. It's gone. So it's there gone. was an electronic fault for sure in the system. We'll see if we can continue to yank that off there. That it's just it a matter of some. I bet glue. there's a screw under here someplace. Matter some. What are you using that for? Just glue. Taught you better than that. Oh, it's just it's all that goop. See up here, there's a wad of it. Oh, it's these two wires are tied together. Oh, here. you got two more to cut with clips. Yep. So they tear that lower circuit. That's interesting how they tie those together. Yeah, so as soon as we cut those wires, that motor freed right up. That's. Yeah. That is hmm. weird. I'm, I don't want to cross anything and blow up one of these capacitors in my face. She, she overloaded. Basically, yeah, what had that. happened? Oh, there's all kinds of goodies falling everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> dang it. Is, yeah. Ooh, capacitors. There's a way to figure that out, how many microfarads they are, but that's... Oh, so here's another disc here. Volt, it says. There's another disc here that must have some sort of sensing... Oh, this, I think this circuit board is... Well, yeah, that, that motor went completely free before when it was pinched it... Uh... So it was something in the circuit board. Oh, the guys. Well, not in the motor, not in the second half, the gearing, all this circuit board right here. Yeah, that's back feed. Yeah, something was back feeding back through here that should be turned off when it doesn't require yeah. well, these any sort of motion. They still have power in them, I'm sure. Well, we can jump them and pop them, but. No, that's okay. <laughs> So that's it guys, you can see that, that I mean they're 100 non-serviceable. They are yeah. quite uh the fancy little deals. This board is um, completely glued down to the housing. Yep. You can't get it out of there without busting it all the hell. And we're not gonna learn anything else from here on out. So No. So I think that covers it. Now we know what's inside of our uh Can Am GPSs. Simple little housing here, a little uh worm drive that you can actually turn from the main gear which i've never seen that before but cool so if your uh dps goes out get out your checkbook yeah because or fixing it. pray to god you got warranty because uh yeah. she, she's a gunner if you don't have warranty get it thousand bucks it's nothing to scream at no uh, but, uh, so from here on guys this is we're going to call this complete uh we were really curious about uh what was going on inside those things so like i said we're going to move on to the truck the plan is, I don't know, Lynn, do you want to kind of give them a little bit of a idea of how... Oh, well, we have plenty of ideas. How the thing is going to work, or do we want to... No, no. Well, basic idea. Yep. What we're going to do, first we're going to get the frame cleaned up, get all that yeah, good to she's... go. Um, Got to go buy all the steel. We're going to put an 8 by 22 foot bed on it. Okay. With a short little 2 foot dovetail, nothing big, because I don't like the looks of a 4 It doesn't... The truck looks stupid. With yeah. the so that gives us the ability to put two X-rays front yep. to back on there. Now, on the upper deck, there's going to be a rack here, headache rack on the back, we'll cross. And then the upper platform is going to hinge off of that with hydraulics. So we'll put a third X3 on the top, and it'll be tipped up over top of the first X3. Yep. So we'll have three on here, 
This truck has the capacity for a 14,000 pound trailer. Can't go over that or you're over, you're over uh, CDL. You gotta have CDL after that. Yep. So we'll have, we're gonna have five machines on this time. We'll have two on the trailer, three on the, three on the, uh, on the truck. And uh, so we'll be able to, that'll be a sight going down the road. Should be pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, you will pull the one on yeah. and then it'll, zzz, it'll lift up. Nose another one right underneath it, back another one on. Then we'll lower the one, and the front one will lower over top so it's right on top of the other one. Yeah, makes it nice and aerodynamic. Yeah, to keep it lower. And, uh, so it'll be a fun little project. Yeah. How, how we're going to. You're not going to know what to do until after we get the deck built. So we'll get For that sure. Going. Yep, that's, that's part number one. Like you said, we're going to sandblast, get the steel, and just start building. So that's our next project. We're hoping to get this done before our, I don't know. For the next the big ride. ride, hopefully, yeah, the big premiere might be the blog ride. You guys are going to so. see it, but uh, I think so. I but think the drags are where she'll come out and do her first heavy haul and make her appearance. So I mean, he, we're talking, you know, paint and wraps up yeah, front with the logos it. on it. We're going to put a, like a wind guard up top or like a wind thing, like the, the '80s on there. Uh huh. So air horns. Len's got a DVD stereo system we'll put in there for us so I can watch TV while he's driving. Oh, we're going to have a train horn on this baby. <laughs> you see this thing coming, you better close. <laughs> better move out of the way. we got trail ride to do. You're going to soil your underwear. <laughs> yeah, so this... Uh, oh, chrome rims. Oh, yeah, we yeah. got the cover, wheel covers are going on it. And, uh, yeah, so I got one hell of a deal on this truck. Nobody will believe it when I tell them, but I'm not going to tell you what I paid for it yet. It's almost too ridiculous. Yeah, I'll tell you. We'll do a full build right up on a board or something. Done, you're yeah. going to be amazed what it costs us to build this thing. <laughs> it, it's next to nothing. But what a cool ass truck. I mean, I just. It'll haul free up here. I mean, but. Mm -hmm. You know, this will be a stepping stone. <clears throat> we may use this for a while. Yep. Step up to a crew or something, or maybe even something bigger. Yeah, maybe go heavy hauling. I, yeah, as long as this doesn't get past CDLs, I don't have to go through all that crap. But, you know, no, we get a, a 26,000 pound uh, machine. but We golden. I know we're probably going to take this to West Virginia, I'm not sure. But yeah, we'll that'd see. be the hopes. That would be nice. That way we can kind of ride together and we're not heavy hauling a bunch of things down there. We can just have guys take our normal car. Yeah, you know, instead of everybody truck driving and stuff. Yeah. So. Yep, I want to do some engine work. Has exhaust brake. I don't want to get that. Yep. But uh, I'm gonna pull the, the valve cover, and I think I'm gonna put new injectors in it, new glow plugs, flash the valves, all that good stuff. So, you know, I know it's it's part of our, of our off-road deal. Yeah, it seems like it's a little off, but this is what we haul with. This you is know, what we're gonna, gonna haul with, and you know, it'll give you some ideas, maybe for your trailer. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, we want to get a little bit of everything that goes into side by side. And, but. Yep. When you see this thing going down the road, you're going to know who it is. Let me tell you that. <laughs> that's right. It's going to be that right there, son. Right yeah, there. that's right. M3 off-road all the way. Yeah. So we're going to tie it up here, guys, for the day. Thanks for uh, joining us for the DPS ride or here. DPS teardown. <laughs> yep. And uh, next you'll see us on the truck or maybe a side ride. Who who knows? We never know what we're, we're up to, jump, but yeah, we're as gonna much gonna as possible. We're going to jump around on this truck a little bit because mm -hmm. we're going to have other stuff in between. But. Yep. Now that the heat's in. <clears throat> It's actually warming up nice in here now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can tear into it. So thanks again, guys, everybody who's been watching, subscribing, hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Uh, things are moving pretty fast here for 2020 already. We're excited. So thanks for sticking with us, and uh, we'll see you on the trail.